What would you say if I told you there's a game that incorporates elements from truth, like Bayonetta, Bloodborne and the Devil May Cry series? And what would you do if I told you that it was a PS3 game? Well, this game does exist and it's called Knight's Contract. I'm gonna be real here and say that I wanted to review this game because of all the negative feedback I heard over the years and I wanted to try it for myself. We start off strong in the form of a fairy tale like narrator, complete with beautiful illustrations and a short cutscene setting the tone for our adventure. In a distant land long, long ago, there lived a group of wise women with extraordinarily long lifespans. At the arrival of the Black Death, these women emerged from their forest and devoted themselves to aiding the people, treating their afflicted, assisting women in labor, and ousting rats and evil spirits. The women seemed to exist on a plane between life and death, and the people revered them. Making his way to the monster infested city is the Black Swordsman. Oh, uh, sorry, wrong guy. Of course, I mean the executioner from the opening cutscene. You are greeted by a curious little fellow and he informs you that this city is blacked by the Black Death and an army of undead. I'm searching for shelter for the night. D -d don't you see what's happened here? It's no concern of mine. I don't die. D -d -d this is no ordinary epidemic. If you don't get out of here now, they will come. As any badass hero would do, I'm sure our boy Heinrich will. Oh, whoa, oh, 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 oh. Huh.
turns out Heinrich can't die. Even ripped in pieces, he just reanimates after some time. Getting down and dirty, the game drops you right into a mob of easily dispatched undead. Perfect for you to get used to your huge bloodborne like scythe. The little man introduces himself as Minocalcius. Unlucky for him, Heinrich isn't interested in alchemists at all, but don't fear, cause he is really interested in witches, as am I. Sir, could I ask you to aid my grandmaster? I've no mind to be mixed up with charlatans. Uh, uh, wait, please! Master Paracelsus was an alchemist, but my grandmaster is not. She's more of a... a witch! Show me to her. As you probably realized yourself, this game is ugly. Even for all PS3 game, there are quite a few better looking PS2 games in the background and character model departments. Even worse than that is that the game has like no style, especially compared to the illustrated art, that looks pretty nice. The combat feels serviceable. I mean, it's not Devil May Cry 3, but there are some combos to use, chain together, and some new ones to learn. Heavy and light attacks, drone dodges, all to be used while using the good old lock-on function that shows you the health of the target, which is a really welcome feature. Around the next corner, you're introduced to your partner in crime for the duration of this adventure. The Witch Gretchen, already in conflict with your first boss, Stradle. The Rose of Magmel. It beckons even the most restless dead to the Island of the Blessed. <laughs> Human life is made up of tiny life forces. Even after taking its final breath, these life forces remain within the body in abundance. You simply bind these life forces and control them. But when the body's life forces are exhausted, your curse is broken and they are freed, Stragle. Silence! Stragle? How to defeat this then? A demon knight, its life force sealed within its black armor. My slave. Who seems a bit torn up about the whole affair? After a slightly cut off cutscene. You're late, Heinrich. Could you lend me a hand? How do you know my name? The next major mechanic is introduced. Unlike Heinrich, Gretchen can and will die if left to her own devices. So you have to play her bodyguard. I know what you think. A constant escort mission doesn't exactly sound like fun, but at least at first, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, more to that later. Now, magic. Gretchen isn't useless at all, as she either throws some small magic tricks on the floor by herself, or, more interesting to you, is able to equip four different mighty spells and choose when to use them. They actually come in great variety and can be used as close range or long range attacks, self buffs, combo extenders and finishers. While you and Gretchen are booked for the first boss fight of the game against the Flayed Witch. It's very basic, but functionally. I know that nowadays games like to start off things with a bang. But a simple fight is sometimes a nice place to start and learn the ropes. Hit the witch, dodge her telegraphed attacks, and take out some ads. All things you need to do later, nice and easy. Straggle doesn't take too kindly to her role as an introduction boss and makes her stand clear. This concludes your first mission, and look, you even get a nice post level rank screen, which I never seem to get below A rank. Still weed every day. Still weed every day. The haunted witch refuses to give up though and uses her remaining magic to turn herself into something ugly, big and ugly. And with googly eyes for some reason. They don't come off as threatening as she thought, I bet. The following set piece reminds me of something Naughty Dog would work on. Only rest refined 
and riddled with distracting loading. The following boss fight is a good opportunity to show off one of your two special attacks, which Embrace, in which for some reason a giant naked Gretchen attacks the enemy for massive damage. At the same time, it's also the perfect opportunity to talk about what I find so fascinating about this game. I don't agree with the opinions online that this game is 100% a bad game, I think it's mediocre, but the real disappointing thing is how much wasted potential this game actually has. In fact, in another timeline this game could have been a celebrated classic character action game. Take this fight for example. While there's nothing wrong with it, there is also almost nothing outstanding about it. This huge flashy monster reminds you of something from let's say Bloodborne, but it lacks the seriousness and style of a one reborn or Ludwig boss fight. It even has the cool blood splashing effect that was done so much more effective by From Software all these years later. I get that this is a PS3 game and Bloodborne PS4, but even Dark Souls is ahead of it in artistic, uh, let's say, implementation. Back to the fight. You dodge charge attacks and her fire breath. You even use Gretchen's magic to restrain her thorns. Uh, but you don't really need to, as your scythe and magic do more than enough damage. Drop her health and you're rewarded with a cutscene and... Okay, so out of nowhere, in each boss fight, after you drop the boss health to zero, you have to finish it using QTEs. And these QTEs are really strict, with a short time window, a specific pattern you have to mash buttons that instantly fail if you change the rhythm or hit something during it, and the impossible to guess button selection. Fail once and you have to start the boss fight over on half of his health. This is probably the worst use of QTEs I have ever seen. While being super frustrating, it's only a time waster, as long as the boss fights stay easy. Also these magic finish sequences remind me of something, but I can't quite name it. Anyway, with the big flash monster dead, Heinrich discovers that Gretchen is in fact the woman he killed in a witch trial set up by the German noble hero Faust. She decided to go blonde and have her outfit overhaul I guess, 100 years to change her girl. For his crime, Heinrich was cursed with immortality, uh, really not the worst curse to have if you ask me, and for 100 years, she asked for a way to lift the spell, because he is tired or something. I really don't know, cause the game never shows him being sick of endless life or fed up with fighting, you know, the things these people normally have a gripe with. Gretchen is offering Heinrich a deal, if he takes on the role of a bodyguard, defeat the evil witches, travel to the Brocken and take control of the almighty MacGuffin, the Amulet del Monde on Walpurgis Night. I will need you to once again execute those witches in league with Stregel, like you did so long ago. If that's what it takes. Then I am at your service. Wonderful. Now Heinrich, I need you to kneel before me. Seems like Gretchen could definitely use some help, so a title giving knight's contract is formed. Cut to our primary antagonist Faust, who obviously tricked everybody into thinking the witches were at fault for the Black of the Black Death, and now uses the power of said witches to stop you and get the MacGuffin for himself. 
He and the witch in the Soul Edge design talk about how the heroes really have no chance and everything goes as planned. Cue evil laugh. <laughs> Arriving at the forest covered in snow and ice, you're greeted by the voice of the next boss witch, out of nowhere. And as before, Gretchen near Goshen skills fail, like a fallout character that has no point in speech. You're just as kind as ever. Trude! Stop all of this and return to where your soul belongs! I'd rather this not turn physical, but you're giving me little choice. In the forest, you're greeted by the friendly woodland creatures. Oh, that reminds me. I haven't shown the other special skill, Knight's Fury. Well, here it is. Heinrich gets huge and blue, like a color changed hawk, and wrecks havoc against his foes for a limited time. This form of devil trigger is pretty useful, as it slows time and renders the player invincible. Now here's the thing. You can spend your blue magic bar that fills when you finish off enemies on either Fury or Witch Embrace but one is, in my mind, so much more useful and faster. If you use the special on normal enemies, which you almost never have to, or should, Embrace is pretty much a one shot, so why run around in fury and do the same risking missing a monster that's just out of sight? Even in boss fights, I think that Embrace does around the same damage as you could do in fury and you can always use it, even when the boss is not in melee range. So yeah, Embrace for life. The enemies aren't that much of a problem, so Mother Nature herself comes after you and separates the duo in a huge avalanche. This circumstance is used to introduce one more mechanic, the Needle of Time, a name that really cracks me up, it's basically just a time limit, so nothing special, just reach your partner as fast as possible. One thing I really like is the touch of the shattered white skin in the caves, probably 100% not a clue as to what the next boss fight will be. Upon reaching the witch you make your way through the maze-like caves. In those I totally got lost. Snack attack. This big reptile wants to snack you, but in the best Wacker Mo style, you have no problem hitting it on a stupid nose. Deal with the other enemies and you soon find yourself in a situation where I literally don't understand how they got themselves into this trap. I mean, look at this. The snack didn't even try to hide, they just kinda walked into it. As cool as gigantic snacks are, they apparently are made out of cupboard, cause it really has the smallest health pool possible. Of course this was only phase 1, as you still have to defeat the scaly witch Druder, who really is banned on revenge. That doesn't make much sense, but hey, at least Gretchen thinks us humans are cool. The fight against the stock matching using Lamina and her two snakeheads is certainly more involved, as you have to time where you focus your attacks, either stun the snakeheads or attack the evil witch herself to deal some actual damage. You also have to watch out for Gretchen, as Truda has a lot of AoE and crab attacks that can render you immovable or damage Gretchen directly. And don't forget the awesome mandatory QTE finish! You know, I think that pulling it out wouldn't just make you okay again. Well, good riddance, snake lady. A rule for games is that when there is an ice level, there also has to be a fire one, and vice versa. In a pretty metal cover like way, you meet the fiery helder, and as Scratching explained seconds before, the witch code says that magic should help humanity and not harm them. You make your way through the abandoned burning city, take care of the usual undead, fire team bad guys, put out the blazing inferno using the city's water system, and fight a big old fire golem. By the way, because I didn't talk about it the first time in the winter area, there is a reoccurring event in this game and it's about a real side character, 
Gretchen's pupil Minicalchias has a knack for getting into trouble, despite the witch telling him, It's good to think of others, but you must also take care of yourself. Ugh. From being stuck at the other end of a canyon to standing on a small heap of dirt surrounded by lava, it's your job to help the little guy out. While the interactions stay the same, the little man rewards your effort with trinkets you can use to get an edge in battle. These items are really useful, from increasing health for Heinrich or Gretchen to reducing magic cooldown, which I found really strong as it lets you spam strong skills with otherwise long cooldowns. The blazing boss decided that your showdown should be held at the top of a high building, probably because that would make for the most cinematic arena to fight in. To get there, you have to overcome the crumbling stairs and the waves of enemies in your way. This is the first time Gretchen's eye will let you hang big time. She falls off all the time, crying for help like it's Yoshi's Island. <laughs> Your safest bet is the princess carry, but you will have to let go of her to fight at some point. I cleared the section by actively ignoring Gretchen and just climbed the ladder as fast as possible to trigger the next cutscene. The boss fight is pretty cool, as cool as a blazing chariot obviously is. You only have to dodge her charge attacks and avoid ranged magic if she is out of reach. Once the witch tries to close in on you, it's time to unleash every attack that you have, as she takes damage like no tomorrow. Just hope that she never hits Gretchen, as she will fly straight off the building. As her health bar depletes, you soon find yourself in the second phase of this duel. Fighting the witch on the small hanging platform proves really difficult as the space that is available to you gets smaller and smaller as a lava trail produced by the boss covers more and more of the platform. As you are fried by fire, she often tries to stab your partner, repeatedly damaging her over time, and oh, falling off is once again a big problem. It was around this time I started to actively hate the boss QTEs and got worse at them as time goes on. Having that which was like a bug, our heroes make their way out of the city and are greeted with a good old slow sarcastic wilderness clap. Defeating a monster like that is quite a feat. Faust the big bag complains to Gretchen how complicated this all is and that he just wants her shard of the amulet demand to obtain true immortality. Resurrecting the dead witches and the civilian casualties were just a way to lure Gretchen out of hiding. Faust wants true immortality like Heinrichs, and, as of now, he only can't die of old age. To that point, he even asks Gretchen to cast the same spell on him. After that, the talks come to an ugly end, as his old sermon slowly throws a potion to the ground. Steps up, throws deep, far side line, Jacoby Jones, has it at the 20, oh! Jacoby Jones, touchdown, oh! Raven, and the miracle is answered! Oh! The alchemy leaves some flesh golem breeding spots on the ground, but as usual, the fleshy foes don't pose much danger to you. After that little warm up, Faust himself wants to get in the action, so let's show him what you're made of. Okay, let's try that again, you cheap knockoff of a virtual fight. This time, even his little magic tricks will not save him from your side. While it, for a moment seems if you could beat him right here right now, Faust pulls off the old beating you in a cutscene trick with a shot of the witch treasure, and everybody just kinda agrees that they should meet up at the Brocken for the final of the game. At this point the game actually takes the time to explain what the MacGuffin everybody is after is. 
It's the power of this shard that allows me to use witchcraft. It's also what keeps my soul anchored in this body. It is the root of all magic. A crystal which gives whoever obtains it power beyond human understanding. That is the Anima Del Mundo. As the witch and the executioner cut through Reinhardt's wild forest, the sky was rent by a sudden storm. Bolt after bolt of lightning fell in their direction, as if they were aimed to strike them. The witch said, the Witch of Storms attempts to hinder our progress. If they were to proceed, the Witch of Storms would need to be subdued. They continued through the woods, heading to the giant's castle where the Witch of Storms dwelled. This area has a nice touch to it, because, besides the Storm Witch, inside these halls there also resides the future telling witch Rapunzel, explaining all the hair hanging around. Now Rapunzel is actually supposed to be an ally of Gretchen, but Heinrich has to inform her about some unseen developments. I heard the rumor in a tavern some time after I had become one of the hunted. I believe the rumor was that she hanged herself by her own hair the day you were executed. That can't be. The plan was that she would be the sole survivor. All that time we spent freeing her from her chains. Anyway, the castle. It's a huge area. It's easy to lose your way, as I did. And or have problems with easy puzzles, as I did. Going along with the web-like hair, there are now some spiders to fight. But, other than that, there isn't much to talk about in enemy variety. Well, that is until you take the wrong corner and after a short cutscene the game turns into God of War, or at least tries to do a titan-like set piece. Huh, <laughs> doesn't mean that Heinrich the old charismatic joker loses a sense of humor though. Trendula? Trendula? She's gained some weight since I last saw her. Bazinga. <laughs> Jokes aside, after beating up Trendula for a bit and running up a tower in your best crater style, one of the most infuriating boss battles of the game begins. There are actually quite a number of reasons why this fight is so horrible. First, you better level up the magic spear spell, as it is the only way to hit the boss who materializes outside of the actual ground you walk on, otherwise you have to run up to the storm witch, dodge and attack her arms. Now, that wouldn't be a problem for the player, as it is easy enough to dodge. For a rich partner, not so much though. Even while avoiding the boss, you still have to watch out for range attacks that for some reason clip through buildings, well capable to lead to your death. Prolonged hiding leads to bridge drawing, which in turn makes the arena even smaller. The boss is never stationary, popping up left and right making you run from side to side at the cost of risking a game over. Even if you bring her down, there's always that part. Pray that you don't fall off the failing a QTE, as you have to start over the whole fight if that happens. Despite all these stepping stones, I somehow managed to beat her, using a lot of time I never get back. The game isn't quite done with you, as it lets you face the toughest enemy that isn't a boss. One of the knights you battled the whole time, but with a cool presider design and glowing like a Christmas tree. He is strong, fast, magic resistant and has a truckload of health. So uh, have fun? Uh, Meister HG is trying to stunlock him with specific spells, while they do little damage you just safely while on the holy knight till he falls over. Finally, you arrive at the source of the hair that was spread all over the castle. 
As I said before, Rapunzel isn't the biggest fan of Gretchen, so she then forms in the obligatory spider boss. Come and defeat me and take back your future, Gretchen. <laughs> Luckily, this boss fight is quite easy, as she eats damage like no tomorrow. At Faust's office, he has a quick talk with the coolest evil witch and some evil laughing time. So, no new developments there. <laughs> you know how most action games like Devil May Cry have a section where the developers reuse a lot of old assets to get some more time out of the playthrough? Yes, we're at this point. Arriving at the Brocken, our two heroes are surprised by Miranda out of nowhere and she is sending them to the Shadow Realm of Acid Reuse. Kaiba! This will crush the evil in you! Mind Crush! <laughs> now the evil plaguing your mind has been crushed to bits! As Gretchen explains, there are two magical keystones that need to be destroyed at roughly the same time to escape. Luckily for us, Minocasius has got a legendary sword with plus mana burn or something, so they allow him to actually help in person. Behold, the sword of a thousand truths. We must get this sword to the ones who have proven they have no life. Let's just hope to Christ they don't start the battle before we can reach them. For me, in case something like this happened. This sword is imbued with powerful magics, and it can easily break open a witch's seal. First off, Heinrich with Minocalcius taking the Gretchen support spot, offering some really strong abilities, especially the Ice Potion skill, allowing you to kill enemies in one strike. Starting in a special dimension, kinda like a Shattered Mirror dimension, you travel to different areas you have been during your journey, mostly going from battle to battle if the game doesn't crash. As soon as you destroy the keystone with your little alchemist, the game shifts location to the witch trying to do the same. Now I admit that I was really surprised the developers did go the extra mile creating a moveset for Minocalcius and Gretchen. Even if Minocalcius can't be played directly and Gretchen only has a basic combo string and her spells. While playing as Gretchen you want to make sure you don't get hit as you have a limited amount of magic to heal yourself and the best way to make sure of that is to select the right trinkets and spam your magic as much as possible. Not the most heroic or exciting thing to do but hey, as long as it works. At the end of both sections, you get to face a shadow version of Heinrich and Gretchen respectively. Always a thing you can pull out in an adventure game, proven time and time again. Miranda isn't amused by the gang trying to leave her pocket dimension, so it comes to the next boss fight. She actually is quite an easy fight, while kinda annoying, cause she is all over the place, but other than that, pretty straightforward. 
and check this out. This is my first time by the way. In war, there is no victory without sacrifices, and so even our group has one to make. No rest for the wicked, as there is still a seemingly immortal evil wizard man to kill. At this point, climbing the Brocken almost feels like a victory lap. No enemy can stand upright long against your powered up melee attacks or the barrage of magic attacks you let loose. <laughs> Faust's right hand man tries to stop you one last time, trapping you in a labyrinth. At this point, this is just prolonging the game and the maze is neither difficult nor interesting, so I'm just gonna skip it. Even transforming into a pretty ugly flashbub monster can't stop us, as it's really nothing more than a big grotesque punching bag. After all this, you finally arrive at the broken altar, seeing eye to eye with your nemesis Faust. Of course, he gets his will in dialogue explaining his worldviews and why it's necessary for him to win. The first phase is a powered up version of the bridge fight. Despite him jumping around like a rabid animal, at this point his health will reach zero pretty quick. Now, phase 2. This is where my odyssey begins and my strange interest for the game turned into hate. Having had enough of your insolence, Faust turns probably as a nod to the name giving noble into the literal devil, Lucifer, Belial, Belzebub, Mephisto himself, also reminding me of the first Sephiroth boss form. To damage the monstrosity, you have to take out his legs and damage what little human is left of him. Easier said than done, as he has a flat face, completely healing himself, hitting like a truck, has a lot of grab and AoE attacks and protects himself with magic barriers. All of that is difficult, but fair for a final boss fight, 
as you want to be challenged in the climax of your journey if there wasn't a single most infuriating decision. You see, in the whole game before, failing a QTE meant starting the fight at the last phase with a boss at about half health. Not with this fucker though. By one of the quick and practical button prompts and he throws you off the stage, meaning a game over and starting from zero in the first phase. The fight is one of the longest, so you can't even train the QTEs efficiently and with each try you get worse at the fight itself, leading you to die before the end. I swear, it was so infuriating, it's true modern games don't do bullshit like this anymore. And then, the difficulty is fair and a thing to overcome, making you feel even better. And this, after three hours of trying, I felt nothing but emptiness. Oh, and the best part, Faust isn't even the final boss. Varianda reveals herself as alive and the true mastermind, double-crossing everybody. She transforms herself into a powered-up version of the original boss fight, but of course with a lot of game over QTEs, even in the middle of the fight. I'm not even gonna lie, I didn't beat her. This is just some YouTube footage from YouTuber Agino Terra. Anyway, you beat her up and uh, let's just watch the ending cutscene. Something ails this era. We must heal it. Okay, so they are in the modern day and age, talking about fighting evil and they even tease a possible sequel. Shall we go then? Darkness is ever present. Indeed. Let's return it to where it belongs. Okay, that's it, I'm done.